What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? It's that time. It's Media Clash time. I'm your host, Wayne, as always, joined by... Paul. And we are going to give you a rapid-fire show today. Not much has been going on since you last heard from us. Uh, but as always, we start with what we've been watching, what we've been playing. Uh, I have played through the Midnight Suns DLC for Deadpool. And the internet, as usual, hates everything because they have the comprehension skills of, I don't know, I'd say an animal, but that's giving, that's making animals seem bad because these damn chickens comprehend a lot of shit. So clearly the internet isn't as smart as a damn chicken. Uh, the, uh, the downloadable content for Midnight Suns is a Dracula story. Uh, the main villain antagonist of this DLC character drop was Sin, the daughter, granddaughter, great-granddaughter, whatever, of the Red Skull. And she is doing some kind of, uh, ritual... To clearly, as it's you see at the end of the missions, to bring back Dracula. Uh, and Deadpool is involved with it because he was hunting down an artifact for not Doctor Doom. <laughs> um, who, if you've played through the game, you see Doctor Doom show up and grab the Darkhold at the very end. Of the game, the post credit scene. So Doom had him looking for this statue, this magical statue, which Hydra and Sin stole so they could resurrect uh, or free Dracula. And at the end of this, you see him saying, it doesn't matter. Uh, my, re- my resurrection uh, is upon us or something like that. Like, it didn't matter. We, we did what we needed to do. I will be free soon, basically. Um, they haven't said who the next character is. It's going to either be Morbius, Storm, or Venom. Um, I am kind of disappointed with, uh, Deadpool's moveset. It, uh, like if I just, the characters to use in a, uh, in a fight, I wouldn't use him. Like, his, just his offense isn't that great. You need to, like, stack shit to to get multipliers on his damage. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's funny. The character's funny. Uh, he sticks around because he asks you to let him stay because he knows Dr. Doom's gonna come and fuck him up. So he's like, can I please stay? And your character tells him, yeah. Um... But I haven't gotten him a high enough like friendship level and all that to like unlock his ultimate move and shit. And I just I don't know that I will because using him isn't that like again like I said he doesn't play all that great. Um, the I'm real like I really am looking forward to like the actual Dracula storyline though, because that's what this game should have and like that those kind of DLCs. And I bought like the full set with the season pass, so all you basically got to do is go into the store and be like, download, <sighs> boom, download. Um, but yeah, it's it's still a good DLC. I like the game. The game's great. Like that is it is a very very good game. And the battle system, like, just the battle, like, just to be able to go and do the battles over, like, just keep going, like, the day counter still goes, I mean, I don't, I'm, now that I've unlocked Deadpool, I might go do a new game plus, because to get the character, you have to, like, unlock Spider-Man, and then he has to, like, take off his mask and reveal his identity to everybody, so you have to, you can't use Deadpool until a certain point in the game. But yeah, if New Game Plus leaves me everything I have and all my characters the way they are, then I might go start that up and play a New Game Plus with it. Um, 
I try to play Destiny again this season. It's not that like it's not the story. The story for Destiny is great. The lore is great, but just the repetitive nature of the gameplay. Like I can't I can't justify just sitting and doing the same shit over and over again. And the fucking massive expansion is coming out at the end of the month, so I might as well just wait. And I haven't even pre-bought that yet. I'm just going to wait and buy whatever it is when I do it cuz I usually buy them in advance, but I don't I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. It's Destiny's been letting me down lately. Um so what have you been playing? Um I recently finished the Dead Space remake, which is they did a fantastic job basically remaking this game from the ground up. Um it's a new engine, so it's the graphics look amazing, new sound. Um they added side missions to the game, which was never there before. Um I played the original. I just have no desire to play it again. <laughs> they make it an open they make it so, to where you can backtrack now at any point. Like the tram system. You can actually pick a destination once you unlock the the station. Mm -hmm. So you can go back and backtrack and like, because there's door, remember how they had doors where you had to waste a no, uh, when you, uh, not, uh, not nodes on a door. Mm -hmm. Well, they got rid of that. And now it's a, um, a clearance door. So you got to get level one clearance, level two clearance, level three clearance. And you get that throughout the game. It's a part of the storyline. But you can backtrack to these different rooms that you might have seen, like a uh, clearance two room door you couldn't unlock because you never had that. You only had clearance one. So now you can backtrack to that. Um, They got rid of the really bad shoot the asteroids level. The turret level, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's you go outside, you take control of a like a smaller turret mm-hmm. and you just aim and hit A button and you shoot like five asteroids to like get the system's guidance back up to like kind of calibrate it. And then you go to the next one and then you go to the next one and then that's it. You don't have to worry about the um But the, I mean it's a it's it's well worth the money uh sixty sixty dollars for a remake um it it's right up there with like when Resident Evil got remade for like the gamecube oh yeah Resident Evil zero um the original the original Resident game. Evil on the gamecube like it's up like Resident Evil two that just came out a couple of years ago how great that was that, I'm yet I still yet to buy that and play it it's real good it's definitely worth it to go back and play that. Um, they added impossible mode and plus they took like stuff that they did in four and dead yeah, space. Did hear they stuff they took and they did. It was in two and three or in this. Yeah. They, they pulled that into this game, um, which adds to the game. It, it helps out the game like way more. Um, they added levels to it um they really pumped up the atmosphere of the game of like going through these dark hallways or going into a room and you're hearing all this noise in the duck system like you're about to get attacked but you don't it's kind of just keeps you in suspense every time you go somewhere uh they added impossible mode and it's basically if you die, it reverts back to hard mode. So you get um, one save slot. There's no auto saves. You have to manually save. You only get one slot. The second you die, this little um, menu pops up and says, Hey, do you want to continue playing on hard mode or do you want to cut 
cut back to the main menu and start over from the beginning. So a little trick I'm testing out that I heard that if you play impossible mode and you die and you go to hard mode, if you beat it on hard mode, you still get that trophy slash achievement for beating it on possible. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the final um, level right now. So I'm going to test it out to see. Because I was playing impossible mode and I made it up to the fucking fifth level. There's 12 levels in all. Made up to the fifth level. Got stuck on the environment. Got cornered, basically, and these necromorphs came over and fucking just annihilated me. And, uh... Because impossible mode's exactly the same as hard. There's no difference other than no auto, and it's a one-hit one kill. I mean, uh... One life. So, yeah, it's, a uh, Definitely a pickup. And then I started playing... I just started playing the uh, Hogwarts Legacy, the Harry Potter game. And um, the only reason why I'm playing it is because I got it for free. And there's nothing else to do until um, Like a Dragon comes out on the 17th. And this game is massive. It It is huge... RPG like I'm just I'm still on my first day at a hog at the school and um, there is just Hogwarts is just massive all the different areas you can explore in this place different rooms and they really capture I guess if you're a fan of the movie movies and the books and stuff like that it, like it really captures the atmosphere of <clears throat> of that uh the graphics look very good uh from what i've been told it's a at least a 40 hour game if you want to just play the main mission and it's over 100 hours if you try to do everything all the side quests because apparently there's a lot of side quests to do and you get all the spells and learn all this different stuff and um it's also apparently you can go light and dark magic Mm. so if you want to you can be an asshole i guess since i could care give two shits about harry potter that'd probably be what i would do because there's some like i I don't care about any of you (laughs) You do get some dialogue choices, and then you meet certain students. That's kind of like, hey, you were really good with this wand duel thing. Um, we got this illegal wand duel club that we do after hours that the teachers don't know about. Like, you want to come be a part of that? And, and um, I agreed to that. And then at one point, you get to go to the town to buy, like, your wand in, I guess, your central hub of where you spend your cash on stuff, buying new cosmetics for your, um, if you want to change your look, buy clothes and stuff like that. So you get to choose, like, who do you want? Do you want the nice chick who's kind of your... Um, the chick's name from Harry Potter. Emma Watson's character. Oh, um, Hermione. Hermione. Uh, kind of like her, or you can pick the dude who does the illegal fucking duels. <laughs> and um, but yeah, it's a it's a massive game, and it's you get cosmo like. You find chest and you open it up and you get, of course, you get like a, a cloak that does plus five on offense and stuff like that, a hat and a scarf and the gloves. So you get that that whole aspect of the of the RPG of like building up your stats of your um, your gear you're wearing and stuff like that. So I mean, it, it it's all right for now, but the problem is I don't know nothing about Harry Potter. I've seen like three of the movies out of the eight. I've only seen one. 
I seen the first one. I seen the second one because I had to because I was working at the movies. I seen the third one, which was actually good, probably the best one, because it was more darker and more edgier. And then that's about it. I seen the last one because we stayed after hours um, nah, the, the to old, watch it. Like yeah, the, Ryan the, and his giant group of friends oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. all came. I was like, man, I might as well just see how this ends. Yeah, the only one that I've seen is the Half Blood Prince, which is when uh, what's his face? Robert Pattinson dies. No, uh, no, that's Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire. Order of the Fiend. I don't know. I uh, think I seen that. Half Blood Prince is the one where uh, Snape dies. What's his face? John Rickman. No. Yeah. No, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. I've seen bits and pieces. Like he, and he like confesses that he loved Harry's mom the whole time. He was a spy Basic, for Yeah, basically. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so yeah, if you want a massive if you're a Harry Potter fan, this is definitely right up your alley. Um cuz it just I'm get, I'm sure there's probably like deep cuts and easter eggs and oh, stuff yeah, like I'm that sure that there is. callbacks to the book. <laughs> That I have no idea. Just goes right over my head. Um, didn't like the voice acting. You can only pick two. Like you get to make your character at the beginning, but you only get two. Two uh, voices. Either it's a British kid, boy, or a British girl. Well, yeah, I mean, because Hogwarts is a Britain. There's technically but, so there's an American no, Wizarding Academy. Oh, uh, let's see. I did not know that because I was going to say yeah. There, there, there are uh, more than one. There, there is an American. There was supposed to be. I mean, isn't that the? There was supposed at some point there was going to be a spinoff with like American? something at the American Wizarding Academy, but it, I don't think it ever happened. It never happened. Hmm. But yeah, it's it's just like Bleach. There's like the whole Bleach anime revolves around this afterlife in Japan, and like there is one in the West as well that kind of resembles Western religion, whereas Bleach is like Buddhist Shinto religion. Yeah. So, but they just they don't ever cross over because there's no need. Um. Yeah. Within starting next week, it like. There's going to be games like every week coming up for like the next month. Like a Dragon's next week. Um, Atomic Heart comes out next week. Oh man, that's going to be another uh, controversial game. Atomic Heart? Yep. Because it's made by a Russian studio. Really? Yep. That's controversial because of that? Yep. Okay. It's a Russian game. Like it's... Yeah, all about the, Russian... Yeah, well, I mean, like, yeah, people are complaining, oh, it makes the Russians look good, and they're doing all this bad shit. Oh, my God. I mean, it's, again, it's that fucking overly vocal minority of people on fucking Twitter. Like, Twitter doesn't matter. I never heard that, that controversy about it. Oh, yeah, I mean, I will listen to PlayStation podcasts every week, so... Yeah. I get all my video game dirt and shit from that. Yeah, PlayStation. I never heard us Xbox Xbox people just play games and complain I don't know, about. Just, you go listen to. I don't know. I don't listen to the Collins Xbox podcast. He's got. They've got the PlayStation one. They've got an all Xbox one. We just bitch and moan about our free games that we get every month and how much they suck. <laughs> Um, I don't even remember what the free downloadable games were this month. I'm still waiting to get some like classic PS1 RPGs and shit, PS2s. Like that's when I'll be like, all right, I'm getting what I want. I'm getting what I'm paying extra for. But again, I'm paying like 119 dollars a year. Like who cares? Like yeah, they um. Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo has officially came out and said they're not going to do anything at E3 
now you're gonna have a floor presence. Yeah. Um. Oh, fucking Xbox is uh, threatening to uh make the UK Death Valley of tech if they don't allow the merger. Basically, I mean, Sony's even- got every right to like. The highest selling game on PlayStation was Call of Fucking Duty. Oh yeah. So now they've basically backed Microsoft into like into a spot. They're like, all right, you're saying you're not going to take it, you know, exclusive. So even if you, the, even if the merger is allowed to happen, you ha- because you've said it in court, you have to leave it multi system. And if you do make it exclusive. The FTC can come back and break your ass up. I mean, I think Xbox can do exactly what PlayStation was doing. Play it a week early with us. Only these exclusive yeah. DLC stuff and exclusive yeah, all missions. This shit is will, exclusive to us. Yeah, it's it's what? just they know they're never going to catch up. They know. I think that's what this is all about. They can't. They don't have anything in house anymore that's good. When Microsoft laid off all those people, like a shit ton of people from 343 got let go. So your Bungie, that's clearly an indication y'all have no faith in the team that makes uh, Halo. Well, Halo um, was a big disappointment, especially yeah, the Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, they know. Some uh, PR person made out, put out a tweet and tagged the FTC in it about The Last of Us TV show. Oh, Jesus. And they're like, hey, look, they're making all this, you know, da 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 da. It's like, but the response is, yeah. That's an IP that Sony created. Yeah. So they have every right. To, like that's it's. They don't own HBO. They licensed it to HBO. The thing with Halo is, like, yeah, and it was uh, Colin was like, yeah, y'all could have done the same thing with Halo, but Halo show the Halo show sucks ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's I'm sure Microsoft's pissed because Halo completely died after release Mm -hmm. especially the multiplayer a lot of the stuff they were supposed to add still hasn't been added to the game you still can't do co-op in the single player i mean in the actual main mission stuff um they just added forge mode which they're doing fucking crazy shit with that forge mode the stuff they're recreating Mm -hmm. somebody recreated their dorm room (laughs) well Uh, i mean we as a map we used to do that in uh, Counter Strike, when we were at Nunez, we literally would make maps. Shit, we would have gotten in trouble for now. We literally made a map of Nunez. People are making for Counter Strike. People are making fucking Call of Duty maps on Halo. We made Craig made a map of the the Kane building, and it had the open lab in it, and we had all of our pictures. Mm. above where we would sit in the open lab um and then on top of that the fucking the show was just a joke and everybody hated it was universally hated oh yeah that's what everybody like, that's what they were saying on the pot like you it's not even an argument like yeah they get to go do all this because it's something they created you're trying to buy other people's shit it's microsoft's fault that that show was so bad because one they should have known that the showrunner was like and the head writer in that was like no we don't want your input in this we're going to do our own thing yeah like we just want the names and that's it and um because fucking the uh one of the creators for fucking last of us directed episode three Neil like Blockman. Neil Druckmann. Druckmann. Yeah, like yeah. so they like Sony and the people who created Last of Us are like intimately involved in that show. Yeah. Like fucking Microsoft just sold the fucking licensing rights to fucking Halo and said, Go ahead. Okay, no one yeah, it's it's shit. It's what every fucking video game property does. Here you go. Go make a, a video game movie. And all it ends up being is a movie with the name on it. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. Like, I, I, I don't, I never played Uncharted. I didn't watch the Uncharted movie. I don't think Tom Holland should have played fucking 
Nathan, Nathan Drake. Drake. Um, he's too young. Yeah, to play Nathan Drake. It still should have been fucking. It's amazing how Mark Wahlberg went from Nathan Drake to Scully. Yeah, but I mean, it still made Sully. money. And it came out during the pandemic, and it still made like four hundred million dollars. Yeah, because it mainly, made profit mainly because Tom Holland was in it, and they were just riding the Spider Man. You can't say that because we went saw that other Tom Holland movie during a pandemic, and it didn't make any money. Which one? That one where like they land on the planet, and all the guys you can see uh, the bubbles. But that was a that was more of an indie thing, right? I mean, it was, and it, it was also on streaming, huh? No. That came out to the theaters. I thought that was like a same day mm-hmm. streaming theater thing. Mm-mm. Huh. It was strictly theater. And it had been sitting for like two years. Like it had been sitting for a while. That's probably why too. They probably put it on the shelf and then it was just like, oh, Tom Holland's popular. Yeah. And so it's time it, to put I mean, it out. And to me, like it wasn't a bad movie. The premises and all that was good. Cherry? I can't remember what the fuck it was called. But it was Daisy Ridley, Tom Holland. Uh, I mean, any any movie would fucking... Uh, Mads Mikkelsen in it is fucking great. Because he was one of the main villains. He had a fucking Jonas brother in it for some fucking reason as a villain. His movie, uh, one of his older movies from, I think, 2020 or 2021... Is just premiered on Netflix called Arctic. Yeah, no, I saw that. I gotta watch that. Um, uh, everything he does is great. Yeah, it's basically a one man show like him in that movie. He um, crash, uh, plane crash in the mountains, and it's just him, and he has this um, person he's trying to keep alive. It's like a basically a survival, like. Man versus nature. Mm-hmm. That's like, there was a weird, uh, during a the pandemic, there was a Jeremy Renner, Elizabeth Olsen movie that came out. Oh, on the side of the mountain? The one where they were investigating the native girl murders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, out of nowhere, and I think that went straight to streaming, and I remember watching it, we both watched it, I was like, this is a really fucking good movie. Like, out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> During the pandemic, there was a couple of those so and so versus. But I mean, I don't know that that movie would have made movie. money at the theater. No, but it was a really good movie. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of anything of the Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo had to direct yesterday. Showed off a new trailer for Legend of Zelda. You can pre-order it now. Still looks empty. Um, <clears throat> Game Boy and a Game Boy Advance. <laughs> Games are going to be on virtual, Switch virtual, mm. uh, so you can buy those and have your nostalgia playing Tetris. I don't know. I mean, it's got to be. I mean, I've played. I played the demo for Oct for Octopath Traveler on. That looks amazing. Like that graphics. The look. original, like the first one. Yeah. And I'm like, I just the fact that they don't drop prices. No, on Ninten- the Switch. Nintendo never does. Like, Octopath Traveler to me, as long as it had been out, like, all right, you're out of your $60 window. Somebody on Twitter. Um, but the second one's coming out on PlayStation, so I'm like, all right, I don't have to. Somebody on Twitter posted something, like, after the direct was like, oh, Legend of Zelda looks so bad i'm just gonna wait until it goes on discount and then the retweet was do you want to tell him or yeah no, like I? clearly clearly you don't know what you're talking about because it never yeah they never goes on discount it's like call of duty like for the longest time call of duty n- oh no the oh. only the only ones that go on discount are you know the, one, the, like old, the older old ones. ones yeah like the new one stays full price the like the previous uh-huh. one will go down they um that's like fucking uh Grand Theft Auto for the longest time, it like the yeah, Grand Theft Auto wouldn't go down. It wouldn't go. It would go down, but you would buy like some stupid bundle edition, so it's not that big yeah. of a savings. The uh, fucking like Fire Pro Wrestling, unless yeah. it actually goes on sale, is a sixty dollar game, 
and the DLCs are not cheap. Like the expansion packs are not cheap. <laughs> like you could play, you could pay hundred thirty dollars. Like I think like the full version of that game with like all the fucking roster updates from Shimmer and New Japan, like all that is like one hundred thirty dollars. I can see that. I mean, there's a there's a train simulator game that's you you can spend thousands of oh, yeah, dollars yeah, yeah. on DLC. When you fucking do the DLCs and shit. Um, I remember the last car mechanic had like a crap ton of fucking expansions because they finally got uh, actual car companies hmm. to license content to the game so you could actually work on licensed cars and those fucking things were never cheap because they want those fucking car companies want their fucking like if I'm gonna let you deconstruct my car yeah accurately <laughs> uh, pressure washer simulator Speaking of simulators. I mean, that's how they get you with those kind of games. It's like the game itself is pretty cheap. No, there's not. There's no like, I mean, you can buy cosmetics for your fucking character. But that's what they, that's what they hope for. Which you don't see because it's in first person mode. Mm -hmm. You don't see it. It's like train simulator and shit. They just, it's all the little expansions and oh, you can get this, (laughs) this train set and all that. Yeah. Um, But. Pressure washer simulator, uh, power wash, whatever they call it in Britain. Um, they got a free DLC where you can do Laura Croft's Laura Croft's mansion. <laughs> you can clean the mansion, and then I think they're doing another one where you play. Uh, you get to wash the motorcycle from Final Fantasy. Somebody, I think it's somebody. It's also the M. It's like somebody's motorcycle. Um. Uh. What other? Fuck, I'm trying to think of any other. Ain't really much video game news. No, because I mean, there's nothing. Nothing massive is coming out really. Um. No, you got shits coming out like. Oh, uh, Jedi. Survivor got pushed. Got pushed till just to April. Yeah, it's so like it's a month, not, like three weeks, I think. Yeah, that comes out soon. Um, like I said, like a dragon, Atomic Heart, something else big. There's there's a couple fucking big, um, big games coming out within the next month or two. Month and two. <clears throat> but. I know I watched a uh, podcast. I mean, it's not something we usually talk about, but Hasbro just laid off like 15% of its workforce. And like a shit to like, so I, the, the, these figures right here are f- done by a guy that used to work for Hasbro. And so he's on this thing and he had another employee that got cut laid off last year. And they were like, they just laid off like all of their like, oldest most loyal to the brands most talented fucking designers and shit yeah people that's about to retire get that no pinch. not even that like young like people who've just been there for like you know that are probably like in there they started working there in their 20s and they're like in their 40s like the guy who was in charge of uh the gi joe line basically okay and like figure sculpts and shit they just fucking let go I mean, it's been a while since G.I. Joe's been... But you are, out of, you are out of the loop. Oh, is it popular? Oh, you are out of... G.I. Joe Classified is a fucking thing. Oh. Like, one six, one, one, one twelve scale fucking G.I. Joe Classified. Like, 25 bucks a figure. Like, G.I. Joe is a fucking massive thing. Like, without any fucking cartoon. That's just like, these motherfuckers... These Transformers are massive and fucking popular right now without a fucking cartoon or anything connected to them. If my G.I. Joe figure is not held together by a shitty rubber band on the inside that's holding everything together. The O-ring. Three, three and a half. Three, three seven fives held together by a, a, a plastic O-ring. If I can't twist that bitch until it snaps. So let's see. 
Critics' Choice save up to 70. Oh, look. Last of Us again. Oh, yeah. They put that out. That's a remastered of a remaster. Uh-huh. They put. They knew what they were doing. They put this out, and then the show comes out. They said the fucking sales for this game have fucking blown the fuck up now. Like, this one in particular. The remake of the remake. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that's never probably never played the game and started watching the show. I'm telling you, that Dead Space, if that ever goes on sale, like if it goes on sale like 10 bucks, save 10 bucks on it, it's still worth it. Oh yeah, that, like, if it drops down like that, then yeah. Yeah, I heard about Forsaken. Forspoken. Forspoken, that's it. So many uh, people just like... It's... From what I've heard, people describe it like who know games. They're like, if they wouldn't have tried to make it photorealistic and like she's from our world, you could forgive the dialogue. Like nobody in reality talks like her. No. So if it was like stylized and like a, fa- a true fantasy, like it wouldn't be that bad. Because watch- that's what I heard the most thing. Most, the biggest problem is this fucking dialogue. I watched somebody play the beginning and there's a scene because she's a troubled youth and she gets in trouble with this gang and she, um, power wash simulator 25. Hours. Yeah. Cause apparently it's called power wash. It's not pressure washer. <laughs> it's a power washer. Oh, uh, Hitman has the roguelike missions now that you can play. I think it was a free mm. update, which adds like so much more to the game where just like, it's kind of like a ram, ramanizer. Uh, uh, the ramen, the random randomizer. Uh, so it's, it's like procedurally generated. Yes. So it's like kill this person, kill this person, do it with this weapon. Um, and then there's like other stuff you can add on to it to get points. House of the Dead remake. <laughs> nice. Now you got to go to the coming soon. That's what I was in. New games, featured, top 10, demos, expand your game. Yeah, that's another, that's another amount of pe- my peeves with... Um, your PlayStation control sucks. With fucking uh, Midnight Suns. They haven't added anything else than what came with the initial game at launch. Hmm. So if you bought like the full edition, you own all the skins. They haven't added anything since. Pre-orders on like Hogwarts, like which? Sorry. I mean, technically, it came out. It comes out today at midnight. Oh, okay, yeah. If you buy the deluxe edition, you get to play it on Tuesday, uh, at eleven o'clock. So technically, you get it like a day early or something like that for uh, the deluxe edition. Like, oh, yeah. See, that would be usually the one I usually buy, the hundred dollar one, because then you get every. Oh, Resident season. Evil, Resident Evil Four. That comes out with um, soon. Vince, the WWE has no recognizable stars anymore, so they had to bring Cena back for their cover. Well, it's the 20-year anniversary or something like that. Then the um, AEW Fight for the Fallen is rated teen. So the, the ratings and the guidelines finally came out. And if you read... Um, why it got that rating and um apparently there's partial buttocks shown so i'm wondering if you well, do I mean, like all the aew women have to wear their fucking no, bottoms up their ass no i'm thinking it's this you know how they do like the the fucking sunset flip and they oh kinda, and they hold they hold the trunks oh, okay, and the yeah, trunks yeah. go down <laughs> you might be able to do that or could be fucking Billy Gunn mooning people because he's Mr. Ass. That'd be fuck- that would be hilarious. <laughs> like a Dragon Ishin. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Diablo 4. Which, I'm worried about that because it still says fucking PS4 on it. I heard this looked good. Oh, Wild Hearts? Yeah. Yeah, I heard that too. Oh, there's another Chinese 
kind of like Sekiro, but it's like Chinese. That's mm-hmm. coming out for the Xbox. Uh, Wo Long um, looked looked pretty neat. Is that the Monkey King one? It might be. I don't know. I all I know is it was on, it's on Game Pass, so it's free. So I downloaded it. Oh no, that's not that can't be it. Like that game blew so many minds when they showed the demo, like the the, the, the monkey, game footage of it. The Monkey King one. Yeah, like mm. pe- like if that came out, people would be fucking going ape shit for it. That's on Game Pass, so Atomic Heart. So if you got Xbox Game Pass, you don't have to buy it. Is it uh? So I want to say it's basically Bioshock, but in Russia. Oh, it it is a FPS. Okay, I'm on. Judas, I think, got pushed back, which is uh, no, it never got pushed back. But they pretty much said it's not coming out until like 2024, 2025, something like that. Oh yeah, Street Fighter Six, Final Fantasy Sixteen, Dead Island Two is finally coming out. Yeah. Is that a Lego game? No. No, that's that VR game. Um, apparently, Skull and Bones got the, delayed again. But apparently, it's basically like um, that fucking. What's the other pirate game? Where you on your ship? For most of it, um, God, what's the fucking name of that game? The Xbox one. Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Basically, it's something like that, but more not as cartoony like Sea of Thieves. And oh, eighteen hundred. Ten dates is the sequel to Five Dates. It's a F. It's like a uh, FMV. FMV, where you go on dates. <laughs> Apparently, Five Dates was a huge hit. Dude, I miss FMV games. That's like, wild. you would think with the technology you have now where you can basically record everything anyway, like, FMV games would be easy to do. I mean, it's making a comeback because there's, like, one or two studios, all they do is FMV games, like, Five Dates. Um, Immortality is nothing but, it's, like, hours and hours and hours of first person, of um, FMV footage. Like, I missed the FMV from Need for Speed. Like, I love the FMV scenes in Need for Speed. They were so cheesy, it was great. That's why I love the fucking Sega CD. Because most of their games were fucking FMVs. Endless Dungeon. Blood Bowl. Yeah, there's some stuff. I mean... Yeah, y'all got... I'm guessing my list is like... Xbox exclusives because I couldn't even tell you what the next fucking PlayStation exclusive coming out was. Ooh, they got an Octopath Traveler 2 demo. Darkest Dungeon 2 finally made it to Xbox. So Something went wrong. All right. <laughs> What is on the critics? Choice? Oh, Wild Hearts is basically Monster Hunter. Yeah, I did hear something about them saying it's like Monster Hunter. Yeah. Um, I heard Meet your, I heard some stuff about Meet your Maker supposed to be good. The s- like Gran Turismo Seven's been out forever, and it's only on sale to like forty dollars. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who did fucking <coughs> did fucking Brock Purdy just won MVP? Horizon, Red Dead, Assassin's Creed. Oh no, Brock Purdy got third. Chris Olove got fourth. Is that the new one? Oh, Champion Content Bundle. I was about to say. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it is. All right. I'm going to have to buy that. (laughs) $70 game for $21. (laughs) 
It's at uh, F1. Mm-hmm. Cowabunga collections, ten dollars off. That's very good. That's that's worth the money. Support your local artist. No, that's not him. That's not Tim's cover. That's uh, Cowabunga collection is all the uh, the old, the old ones. He did. Oh, he did. He did new, Shredder's the Revenge. Shredder's Revenge. That's yeah. it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Tim did Shredder's Revenge. And then you see him and Robbie plotting some shit. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. Wanted Dead. It looks good. That's coming out. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, $16. Gee. Oh, I already have it. <laughs> it must have been included in something. You know, I tried playing Diablo 2. And then I just stopped the first time I died. <laughs> I played Diablo. I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> I played Diablo for the PS2 when it was like a four disc fucking game, and um, I was like, yeah, this is yeah, the fucking Diablo, is... Diablo two remake. It's good, but it still got the you die, you got to make it back to your body to get your shit. And I'm like, no, fuck that. Well, I guess you don't play the uh, um. Souls games and no. stuff like that. No, I do not. It's like fucking Elden Ring. Yeah. I'm like the uh <clears throat> like Jedi Fallen Order. Apparently that's like a kid's game it's compared. Soul, it's Souls it's Souls Light. It's you Souls- have the same gameplay, but you don't <clears throat> It's a kid's game compared to like yeah the other it's, stuff. It's the same basic mechanics, but you don't you don't carry shit, so you don't lose shit. Yeah, and so that game was frustrating enough. Was, I mean, Elden Ring. I I enjoyed playing Elden Ring. I would love, but it. for me to play Elden Ring all the way through, I need cheats. I would love to play Sekiro. Like there's multiple times I have it in my library. I have a copy of the game. Multiple times I downloaded it and just never played it. Raccoon City Edition. I ought to get that too. Fifteen dollars for uh, Resident Evil Two and Three. Oh, that's damn. Yeah, that's definitely worth it. You get two and three together. Three, three was okay at most. I watched somebody play through three, and I'm like, I don't understand what y'all complaining about. Like three. Isn't three isn't all that different from the remake? Like the only thing missing is the mercenaries bit. It's it's been so long since I played three, and I went. It's kind of hard to go back and play those original versions of those games, like just the control wise and the way things like it. The tank system, and yeah, the, yeah. How much is L.A. Noir? Twenty. Twenty bucks for LA Noir. A what fifteen year old game? Ten year old game? It's regular price forty, so that's still Yeah, it is fucking Rockstar. They never Oh yeah. This shit, the fucking Dude, they're still selling Red Dead Redemption online separate. Are they? Yeah. It won't tell me how much it is because I already own it. So I can't see how much they're actually charging for it. There you go, Lost Judgment. You want a Yakuza game that's not Yakuza? Oh. But it's lawyers? <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad price. $24. How much is the, the special edition? 36 Oh, yeah. 10 bucks more, you get the fucking, all the DLC stuff. Callisto Protocol Season Pass, $24. All right, so fuck that game. I perfected that game. Got all the achievements. All right, I'm done with this piece of shit game. These motherfuckers want to do free updates. And it changes, it adds achievements? It adds achievements. You added, st- it doesn't, you still don't. 
See, if you were to do it on PlayStation, you if you pop the platinum and then they add shit, you still keep the platinum. Nope. You don't have the 100% anymore. Now you have like 80 something percent. I mean, the percentage I think goes down, but you still keep the platinum saying you got everything. Nope. Doesn't say that for place, uh, for Xbox. Oh, wow. That sucks. Ghostwire so, fucking Tokyo deluxe upgrade $15. So they added a new game plus and then they they added like one achievement for that. And then they added, um, they're adding a hardcore mode. Basically, it's a permadeath. One, um, if you die, that's it. Kind of like what they did in Dead Space 2. Outer Worlds for 20. Outer Worlds expansion pass for 20. Yeah, so that bundle for Resident Evil, which is Resident Evil 2 and 3... What I said it was, 15 bucks? Yeah. yeah. Two by itself is twelve fifty, and three was non ninety nine. The de- <laughs> but that's the deluxe edition. So you get like the deluxe edition, I think you get like you get all the cheats with it. Like you get like a key that opens up all the doors and you get like oh, unlimited okay. weapons and sh- This poor game. Get like a dragon. That serve is going. That fucking game is going off. So line, that game is going offline in. If you go September, no, I think sooner than that. If you find the Avengers physical copy in the wild, buy it because as soon as that game goes down, prices are going to skyrocket for that game. Because yeah, like right now, I, I because I own it, I because I bought it for like twenty bucks when it got down that low. Yeah, I can go get everything for free. People are selling that for like eighty to a hundred bucks physical That's copies. Stupid. Yep. Stupid. The second they announced the the server was dropping, you go on Amazon, and the only cop physical copies they had was but like not, eighty it's bucks. It's not the server's not dropping. No, they they discontinued the servers. No. They're stopping selling it. Everything's gonna be free. You can still play it single player. But you if you already have the game, right? Yeah. So if you even, all your physical copy is going to do is allow you to play it single player off lawn. Yeah, but you can't play, you can't, after that point, you can't buy it. Digital. No, after, it might be in March, you're not going to be able to buy it. Yeah. And then I, I think the multi, like the servers for multiplayer is going off in September, but you can still, that last game patch is going to allow you to play it offline single player. Yeah, that's why the prices are going up because you can't buy a digital copy anymore soon I mean it says unavailable but I own it that's why how much is like a dragon legendary hero addiction twenty six ninety nine, and I already have the uh I already, I already have the basic edition oh did you mm-hmm. was it free it might have been a playstation plus game probably one of was. the monthly ones probably was you should play it. It's it's a fun game. Snow Runner. I think Far Cry. He's supposed to do something with that soon. That's the anthology bundle. Oh, you get like four games in one. You get three, four, five, and six. Jeez. Yeah, because nobody played six. But I just love the fact when I go through these things, like most of the games that I'm like, oh yeah, oh wait, I already own that. <laughs> that I've already paid fucking actual money for this shit. Oh, Greedfall. I need to finish it. That second, the sequel should be coming out this year. Whatever happened to 1880, whatever. Remember that game that came out for PS4 that everybody was like, oh my oh, God, Oh no, that, 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 that first party, yeah, it didn't, it was too short. Yeah, like, it, was like it a, looked really good, but it was just too short. Five hour game. Yeah. Werewolves. The Order 18 something. The Order, yeah, yeah. The Order, yeah. Back for Blood, $27. There you go, the Yakuza collection. Oh, yep, thirteen ninety nine. What do you get with it? Is it like all the games? Was it the first three or the first five or something like that? Yeah, because it's three, four, and five. Yeah. Those are the kind of iffy ones. (laughs) 
like this this story and the characters they introduce and stuff like that it, it gets gets kind of shaky Valiant Hearts I've been having I've, I've had that since it first came out Queen you can I don't have Sing try to attempt to do a fucking Freddie Mercury I can do Freddie Mercury I'm good mm-hmm I did. I used to do Fred. I used to do uh, the show must go on all the time. Anytime I go out and do karaoke, it was I will always love you. The show must go on. Blaze of Glory. John Bon Jovi. Yeah. Um. There was some other ones that I would always do, and then like other people would just tell me. I remember I used to go to a place on the West Bank. And the bar looked at me one night and she goes, if you do uh, the, the song When I Touch Myself, I can't remember the fucking song it is, the name of the actual song is. When I Think of You, I Touch yeah. Myself. Yeah. She goes, you do that, all your drinks are on the bar all night. I'm like, okay, you ain't going to embarrass me. <laughs> oh, you're not going to go up there and be all ashamed singing oh. Right Said Fred? Hell no, dude. I was When I was doing this, I was like... I have been on stage in a dress in front of hundreds of people before. Oh, you Rocky Horror. I didn't, oh, no, no, that's not... Okay, that's right. I was in Rocky Horror in negligee in front of a, hundreds of people. So what is on my list? It's cheap now. F1. Cowabunga Collection. <laughs> Metal Gear Survive back down to $6. Oh, that game... I think I get Outrider World Slayer just for free, technically, because I own the Outriders. So there's a rumor supposedly Konami's going to start making games again. The some of the shit they put it's because the some of the shit they've been putting out is making money. Yeah. Like the turtle shit's been making money. Is that Konami? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Konami. Oh yeah, the Konami code. Game, yeah. yeah, all those old games were Konami. Yeah. Raccoon City Edition, fifteen dollars. I already own the quarry. No, I didn't get the quarry because she would never tell me she wanted it to play it. So I never did get it. So the new one with H.H. H. Holmes, mm-hmm. um, from what I've heard, is not as good as the quarry. Regular Resident Evil 2, $40. Yeah. So it was only the deluxe edition and the bundle edition that are on sale. I love when, when Sony does that. And technically, that's not on Sony. No, it's the... It's the... It's the developers. The developers. Yeah. How cheap is Saints Row? It's still full price. How? I don't think it's... I don't think I've seen it go on sale yet. How? I don't know. That game is so bad. Fire Pro Wrestling Deluxe Edition. $90. Yeah, makes sense. Fire Pro Wrestling, just a season pass by itself. So if you had the regular plus season pass, season pass, 50 bucks. Yeah. it's a lot of wrestlers. Grand Theft Auto Five, twenty dollars right now. Regular price forty. Well, yeah, that's the game. Um, yeah, because on PS Five, the online and the game are separate. Yeah, and plus, like you buy like those bundle editions with the the Megalodon card or the the mm-hmm. gray white card. And Fire stuff Pro like that. Wrestling by itself, regular edition, fifty bucks. Yeah. So to get the if you didn't buy the bundle, you pay a hundred dollars for that game to get. The fucking season pass. Do do you get the like the creative character? Don't they create characters in that? No, I think all that. Let me see. Is the deluxe edition everything? Uh, includes fire promoter, fighting road, heavyweight chain edition. No, so you still have to buy all those other like the New Japan the eight. AJP, AJW, FMW. Yep, because they love. You got the move craft is free. Right. Uh, parts craft thirty, stardom twenty. Who do you get from stardom? Do they like? Do they go back to like EO Sky and um, Kana and uh, to- uh, Toyoko? Uh, B Priestley, Azo. Toyota. Natsumatora, Sumanatsu, Konami, Q 
Gila, Death Yamasan, Saya, Katamari. I think that's newer people. I Bree Priestley. Yeah, I think that's all newer people. I mean, or, this came out March of 2020. Yeah, so it might be the roster in 2020 because Bree Priestley, I think she showed up in. Yeah, because I mean that would be that's all of them right there. I think they. I think they. Sh- I think she showed up in. Um, uh, NXT UK. Champions Rude Beyond. No, Champions Rude. Ten bucks. Yoshiro Takayama Charity DLC three dollars. Oh, there's your Bullet Club. The Entrance Craft twenty. There's your New the, Japan right there. The other Stardom Pack. That looks like older. You want our Starlight Kid? Starlight Kid. Yeah. Ketsu, Hazuki, Momo wanna be. You know. Yeah, because that looks like. Is that EO right there? No, her. She was always called EO Sky. Oh. Or EO. Yep, there's your New Japan. And that's the 2018 pack. Oh, that's fucking. That's when Kenny and all of them left. Mm-hmm. So that's Shingo. Junior Heavyweight Champion 2017. Was Shingo in that? In 2018? I thought he was still in DDT or something. Updated oh, uh, Switchblade, Maori Warrior, Takaki Shingo, and Tokyo Pimp. Yeah, Bullet Club. That was before Jay White was Bullet Club. He was in uh, Chaos in 2018. That's before he turned on... Um, Takayama and- DLC. Yeah. Yama New Moves. Yeah, because that's Kenny right there. Yeah, there's Okada. There's um, Naito. And that's Tanahashi. Is that Kenny? Yeah, it's Kenny right there. That doesn't look like Kenny. Jason Thunder Liger. Yeah, so the $50 pass does not contain all of this. Yeah, that's just New Japan, it looks like. It had the Fire Promoter, Fighting Road, New Japan, Junior Heavyweight Championship, additional scenario. Who's in the Junior? The Jushin Thunder Liger one. Is it just him? Into the Junior Heavyweight Championship and wrestle you away to victory. Yeah, it doesn't say who's in it. Oh. So it might just be him. <laughs> Fifteen dollars for Jushin Thunder Liger. I'll pay it. I mean, for fucking ninety dollars, you would. I'd be like, no, I need all that shit. Well, if you look at the roster and you see like, oh, you get like. And Fire Pro Wrestling itself is fifty bucks by itself. <laughs> For like a hundred bucks, if you look at the roster and you, you say like there's over a hundred fucking people. And you oh yeah, the roster's massive. Yeah, so basically you're paying like and you can a make dollar, you can basically make dollar. everybody in their creator. Yeah. Oh, Brandon made all of us because he had it and he put pictures up on the DCW fucking Facebook group at one point. Mm. He had made all of us. I know I had a copy of. SmackDown versus Raw, one of them, and I had made everybody in the Fed and basically just replaced the entire roster with DCW people. It was so hilarious. I heard the new WWE game is supposed to be good from what I've from what I've heard. It better like be. The Royal Rumble edition and then there's war games, so you can play war games in it. There's a camera angle of in between the ring. <laughs> That one shot. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you do like, it, it's basically like I think the Rock had. Then the Rock have a special edition where you play through all the rocks. I think Stone so. Cold's yeah, greatest so you probably moments. you probably play playing. It's Cena. all John Cena's stuff. Okay. Um. Yeah, because I think it's twenty years anniversary. Yeah, or something, I don't know. Like I, I don't years. even know if I'm gonna get that AEW win. I'd have to see it first. 
I think it's going to be on. There's a rumor supposedly it's going to be on Game Pass. I'm sure Microsoft throwing money at everybody. They don't care. They cared when they fired ten thousand people. <laughs> There ain't no reason to fire people if you got that kind of money. Mm. Other than, oh shit, we need to make some cuts somewhere. To, especially when you fire people from the, your game division. You fire people from fucking ZeniMax, 343. Like, all the studios that have fucked up lately. Like, you fire people from Bethesda basically because of Fallout 76. Halo Infinite. Well, yeah, because, I mean, like we talked about earlier, Halo was a huge disappointment for them. I mean, it's just, I mean, but at least you can look at where, like, like I said with the Hasbro, we don't talk about toys, but the dude who designs this line, he goes, uh, the year before I got fired, no, the year I got fired, I had Toy of the Year. And the next year, another one of the toys I designed and they made got nominated for Toy of the Year. Yet they still fired me. <coughs> he had des- oh, oh, excuse me. He had designed Dancing Groot, the Dancing Baby Groot. Oh, dude, that's. I mean, that doesn't take that hard to design. Just look, take the design of the off of the movie, and oh, it's still got to design the fucking motor, like all that shit, the layout. Well, yeah, it wouldn't be that. Old. I mean, I couldn't do it. I think he said. I think the the one that was nominated the next year was the Infinity Gauntlet, the the light the, up one. Yeah. With the was it the Iron Man one, or was it the oh I seen was the I, Infinity one? I seen like the actual the, Infinity uh, Gauntlet. I seen a lot of the Iron Man ones, which is probably yeah he didn't win that year, but I don't know. I love those, and I got heads to make me. I mean, if it's gonna it's be like Toy of the Year, I thought it'd be like Toy something. of the Year. Like it's horrible. Like the the ones that get nominated are horrible. I thought it'd be like something original. No, oh, it's Hasbro. They don't have anything original. Hasbro has nothing original. It's all licensed shit. Mm. Their biggest money makers are all licensed. Oh, there's just the stories you that you hear them say tell. They were like talking about the Nerf team, like. Nobody knew ever gets put on the Nerf team because that team's like just so weird and like shut off from everybody else. It's like they play paintball together, they go play ass off together. <laughs> He's like they're just this weird fucking like paramilitary fucking design fucking group. Yeah. I mean, they started off with a goddamn f- um, foam fucking football, yeah, and built a empire off of that. A gun that sh- shot little bitty darts. Um. So let's go talk about some stuff. I guess we've watched. Maybe just punch through this and do some cleanup. Um. I've been watching Night Court, the new and the original. No one. I mean, that show was on for a long time. It's nine seasons. Yeah. So. And I looked at the ratings. It, like, peaked in, like, season three, like, the midway through. But it was still pulling in, like, 11 million that last season. Yeah, Like, it's, it's of, just so weird how TV was, like, because there was nothing else for people to watch. Well, then Shows it, were massive back then. The, um... You didn't have the options like you do now. Yeah. Because I'm sure the new because the new Night Court got renewed for a second season, but I'm sure it's not pulling in anywhere near those numbers. So is it streaming only, or is it on no? TV? It's on actual TV. It's on actual TV, but okay. it's on. Is Quantum Leap its lead in? I don't know. Quantum Leap got renewed too. Yeah, I heard. I heard that one. But Night yeah Night Court got Night Court comes on on Wednesdays. Hmm. I just wait and watch it the next day. One, I can watch it without having to fast forward. Other than Night Court, which again I say is awesome, need to watch it, and then go back and watch the first, the the original series. I might go watch the original series because I love that that it's original so, series so it's much. It's so good, and then just 
It this isn't like again they go oh the reboot I'm like it's not a reboot it's a continuation. What little network TV I watched growing up, the only main two stuff I watched that was like a weekly thing I have to watch every week, uh, was Quantum Leap and Night Court. Yeah, like I used to yeah, I watched a whole bunch of shit, but like Night Court is one of those like you, I just remember being up late and watching, and the fucking theme song is amazing. Yeah. Um. But it's one of like, oh, it's a reboot. Like, no, because when you watch the new one, it's the same, like, it's not the same set, but it's the same set, the same cafeteria, the same office. And these aren't new characters. They're not actors playing the old characters. They're fucking, Abby is Harry's daughter. Who's clearly got some, like, I think she had, like, an addiction issue at one point. She makes reference to and, like, how much her dad believed in her and shit. Like, so she, in one story, like, literally, if you go watch any original episode of Night Court, Harry was, like, always this. Like, I believe in you. You can get through this no matter how bad it is. How many people he keeps from committing suicide in that whole nine seasons is probably tens of uh you know harry was such a good guy that santa claus wanted to like give him the santa claus powers and make him santa claus it's just you know a great sequel it's a sequel it's not a reboot uh one last wrestling thing i forgot about that i just got reminded of uh jerry lawler is making a full recovery oh yeah he had a stroke had a massive stroke, literally face down in the parking lot and got found by one of the tenants at some apartment complex. It's, I thought it was at his condos. Yeah, but he was face down. Yeah, like, like he was in the parking in lot the parking at his lot. condos. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so Night Court is amazing. Go watch it. Uh, a show that I'm kind of upset that got canceled was Reboot on Hulu. That was a really funny fucking show. It was Keegan Michael Key and uh oh the ja- uh, did, uh, Johnny, Johnny Knoxville? Knoxville yeah they would they would re basically doing a sequel to a their Full original House. show yeah yeah it's basically Full House they like what Full House did the revival of Full yeah. House on yeah that's on what the show was about them doing yeah but and the, it got canceled so clearly it didn't get watched enough. Um, while we have in the break, Netflix came under fire, like, because they said they've never canceled a successful show and people are pointing to like, Oh, Oh, I like this. Uh, look at all the critic reviews. I'm like, they said successful, not critical darling. They said successful. A show could have a 99 on Rotten Tomatoes and nobody watches it. Like you'll never see the fucking numbers. They know what the numbers are. They know what the numbers are to uh, what they're paying for it. So, yeah, like, everybody's up in arms. Oh, Netflix is canceled. Like, yeah, if nobody's watching it, they're going to cancel it. Um, And then the last thing I caught up watching, it, it just came out on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I watched Wakanda Forever, and it's okay. I'm not a fan of the changes to Namor. Um, if you'd have told me this was a completely different character, I'd have been fine with it. But to like completely change Namor's like origin, motivation, <clears throat> everything like that, yeah. Like I don't see this version of Namor hitting on the Invisible Woman. So yes, I don't see this version of Namor hitting on the Invisible Woman. Like, I I just don't see it happening. It's not... It's not a good... I don't know. It's just weird. I don't want to sound like an ass. I love the first Black Panther. And I'm glad... uh, uh, What's her name is up for Best Supporting Actress the hell is her name Angela Bassett 
Angela Bassett's up for Best Supporting Actress, and I hope she wins it. Because, uh, I mean, there's got to be a lot of stuff for her cut out, too. But the scene, like, from the trailer where she's like, uh, I've lost everything, what more should I give, is not from the scene it's connected to. It's, like, later on when she's yelling at Okoye. She has a very good shot of winning, and it'd be a huge get for Marvel to have, like, officially say it's, like, somebody from a Marvel film has won, like, a major Oscar. For a Marvel film. Yeah, for a Marvel film. Yeah, because in the first... I, well, no, here's the thing. No, because I, I looked it up. He didn't... Uh, the first big one that I know of that was nominated was Road to Perdition. Yeah, but I'm talking about like win. this new Kevin. Yeah, no, Kevin no, yeah. Falvey. I'm just talk, I'm talking about like comic books in general. What Tom Hanks? Yeah, and but he didn't. I think I don't think it won anything, and I don't think Hanks was nominated. I think it might have been nominated for Best Picture. You know, could have Paul Newman probably was nominated for like supporting. Yes, Paul. I think Paul Newman was nom- was nominated for supporting. Yeah, but he was... didn't win. I think the uh, was it the sound designer. It was like a technical hmm. role. That was not, but that dude ended up getting like a posthumous Oscar. Like it didn't any win anything actually at the Oscars. Well, the I mean, Marvel films always win like visual the effects, visual effects and, and stuff, stuff like that. But this was like cinematography or the cinematographer or something was nominated. They might win best song. I think yeah, one of the Marvel films songs won best song. Maybe Black Panther won. Maybe. Um, yeah, because then the only other major comic book in the Oscar was two Heath. people who played the Joker. Heath Ledger, yeah. And then... Uh, Joaquin? Joaquin. Did he win? I think he did win for... Or was it just the Golden Globe he won? No, I don't think he was. I don't think he won an Oscar for it. I don't know. I know, I, I know he won the Golden Globe. Phoenix... Oscar Joker. Not damn it. I just texted her that. <laughs> She's gonna be so confused. <laughs> like what? Um Next, yeah, I don't see Oscar Joker. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look at the list on who's um Supporting actress. Oh no! Best a- best the best actor. Twenty twenty winner for the Joker. Huh? Best actor? Huh? Yep. He got yeah, because this is all his. He got best actor for Joker. He got nominated for best actor in the Master. Best Actor nominee for Walk the Line and Best Actor nominee for Gladiator. But he won it for the Joker. No, he won, a, he won one before the Joker. He sh- then he should have two Oscars. Let's see. Wikipedia. Filmography and accolades. Nomination for Gladiator, nomination for Johnny Cash, nomination for Freddie Quell in The Master, Best Actor, Joker. That's the only Oscars he's been nominated for. 73rd, 78th, 85th, and 92. Huh. I could have sworn he won one before. No, weren't we saying that's probably why he'll get it? That's the one... Like, he should have won him for other roles, but this will be the one they give him. One character has won two Oscars. I mean, that's kind of... It's a great character. Two interpretations of one character, the same character, have won Oscars. Because I could have sworn he won for Walk the Line. Mm Mm-mm. Just says nominated. Hmm. His new movie looks fucking weird. What movie of his doesn't look weird? Bo is Afraid? Yeah, like all his movies look 
fucking weird. Have you seen that trailer? No. It's fucking weird. <laughs> Just wait until you see the footage from fucking the, the Joker sequel it's filming. I'm probably sure that shit's going to look weird as fuck. Yeah, especially if it's a musical. Oh. Um, but yeah, so... Um, yeah, we'll um, do the Os- Oscar nominations came out. And we'll just do a whole a show by itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm again. I'm glad Angela Bassett is is nominated. Uh, Chadwick Boseman got screwed over when the on the original Black Panther, which is why we all thought he was going to get it for Ma Rainey. Ma Rainey, yeah. Um, but I mean, at least he did get nom- he did get recognized with an Emmy for. What if playing T'Challa? He got that Emmy for voice acting. You know how every year you watch that immemorial mm-hmm. stuff on the award show, and it, there's always those people they leave out, and people get pissed off. It's like this person was left out. Yeah. So the Grammys did one. Who'd they leave out? Aaron Carter. <laughs> I mean, technically, he's a fucking. Like, he should have been. Apparently, there was a small group on Twitter. I don't know how big this group was. That was very pissed that he uh, was not. I mean, here's the thing: if that. you're a member, if you sold albums, like you were on the Billboard charts, you should get recognized. Doesn't matter if you tank your career yeah. tanks, you fucking die of a drug overdose under a fucking bridge. Like you just, just like anybody who's been a member of the Academy. Is that how he died? He died of an overdose, but not, not under, under a bridge. bridge. Okay. Like, in his own house, but, yeah, it was drug-related. He wasn't listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers <laughs> at the time. No. Um, yeah, because he just, it was on, st- like, I had seen clips, like, uh, while I was out, of, you know, while I was laid up on the sofa, like, him on, like, fucking steve fucking podcast and shit, talking about his fucking, the craziness that was his fucking childhood. His big ass face tattoo. I mean, that's when the drugs really kicked in, and he just fucking tatted himself up. Yeah, Bam. Uh, Steve-O just did one for Bam. How basically he's like, I'm done with him. Like I'm. Yeah, no. He's supposedly bringing him on fucking tour or something. He with brought him, him to on keep t- an eye on him, and yeah, he brought him on tour because it's like a, trying to rebuild. Rehabilitate him and yeah, it's like also somebody keeping an eye on him. He, yeah, keep an eye on him and try to keep him the straight and narrow and apparently he was trying to do like stand up or I guess spoken uh, word stuff not spoken word but like like what, what Foley does he doesn't do stand up but he tells like funny yeah. stories about his life true stuff and apparently like after shows he would just go get shit faced drunk mm. with, and his kid his kids with him and Steve-O was like yeah I'm done I tried to help you and you don't want to fucking help yourself then yeah He's like the ultimate fucking good turnaround story because he was like that. Mm-hmm. And now he's. Well, I mean, it's uh, just like fucking. Fuck, Brian Dunn burned out before he did. Like, it's. I mean, there's really only two fucking people from Jackass of like the main fucking stars that are fucking Steve O and fucking Johnny Knoxville. Bam's fucking going crazy. Ryan Dunn fucking wasted and fucking drove that Porsche in that fucking uh, road guard at like a hundred and some odd miles an hour. I mean, the only other people you could pick out of Jackass would be like Wee Man. Wee Man's um, apparently... Um, Danger. I can't remember his first name. Something Danger. Mm-hmm. Um, according to Steve-O, he was like extremely smart with his money. Mm. <laughs> like he's one of the people that held onto his money and did the right thing with, with the money that he got from Jackass and stuff like that. And uh, Chris Pontius. Like, yeah, was, that's, that's the other one. Yeah. But I mean, the ones who stayed names kind of like yeah, I mean, after the show stopped yeah because they gave bam his own show yeah like him and his and 
desperately trying to get over his band mm-hmm. that MTV forced down our throats and became a hot topic. Fucking mm-hmm. oh my god, their fucking symbol is the so amazing. Gra- the heart of Graham looks so dumb. Yes. Um. But yeah, I I think if you you are a member of the academy at one point and you die, you should be recognized in the in memoriam. If you're a fucking Billboard artist, if you've sold fucking records underneath fucking Billboard, like if you you should get nominated, you should have that remembrance. Uh, speaking of which, that will probably be in this year's or next year's Grammy no uh, in memorial. Burt Baccarat died. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of people been kicking off. Yeah, it's starting to get that. It's the old. It's the old. The old people, like you know, seventies, eighties, nineties, are all. Yeah, Burt Baccarat was ninety four. The one of was Laverne and Shirley. One of them. Uh, Shirley. Yeah, not the director. Penny Marshall. Yeah, not Penny Marshall. The other one died. Uh. Yeah, a bunch of people just it's it's that older older generation of of TV and movie people. Uh And then, you know, they'll fill out the uh the Academy in memoriam cuz if they did movies cuz she yeah, she was in she was in uh American Graffiti? Yeah, she's in American Graffiti. Yep. Uh So yeah, oh yeah, cause, yeah, there's a bunch of people in American Graffiti. A lot of those happy days. Uh, uh, yeah, because that was your first spinoffs. Like, Laverne and Shirley was a spinoff of Happy Days. Yeah, Mork and Mindy. Mork and Mindy. Uh, what was another one, too? Uh, Joni Loves Joni Chachi. Joni Loves Chachi. Which was the number one show in Korea. Because Chachi is pussy in, <laughs> in Korean. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, those Asians. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, I mean, yeah, that's, it, that's it for me. Like, Wakanda Forever was I don't know if a letdown. I don't know if it still is, like, the number one highest rated show in, Kore- in South Korea. I don't know. Like, like we said here, <laughs> like, numbers went down because people got other options and there's <laughs> other things to watch. But when somebody makes a show, an American like show. Loves pussy. <laughs> Yeah, of course, everybody tuned in for that fucker. They were like, wait, what is this? It's either pussy or dick. It's one of the two. It, it was like some obscene thing that I guess nobody knew what. Well, clearly they would have known when they went to those TV shows, those stations, and were like, we're going to call This is what it's called. Everything else gets, re- I mean, that's why now <coughs> shit gets renamed. Yeah. Ant Man is getting some movie just got banned in China. I don't know if it's Ant Man or not. Dude, there's a lot of movies that haven't gotten releases in China lately. I don't think she. I don't think Black Adam did either, and that's hurt it. it says no, it's not Shazam. Or it might. I don't know. <clears throat> But yeah, uh, I guess quickly what I've watched. Okay, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Um, uh, one Saturday, I went down this rabbit hole of YouTube Japanese stuff, which was interesting. And then I found a channel, conspiracy channel called The Y Files. It was very interesting to me because this guy is doing conspiracy theories and urban legends and stuff like that. And a lot of the stories are from, there was this old radio show that used to be super late at night um, called Coast to Coast with Art Bell. And if you listen to the show, it's mainly a lot of UFO stuff but eventually he would do like 
he had a open post on on his forums for the show of like if you have any time travelers out there please get in touch with us oh i love the t- i love the fucking people on instagram and tiktok who claim to be time travelers yep so this is before that this is like you had to go on a forum before tiktok and you show videos and stuff like that and so like there was always like two episodes that stand out about these time travelers that come back in time and they talk about like the multi once you come back in time, I've already changed history, so you can't ask me like, "What's the lottery numbers? Who's won in the Super Bowl?" Blah blah blah, because time has changed. Because I'm not supposed to be here, and I'm interacting. Um. So yeah, it it's the Y Files is very good. It um by this guy does these episodes about these different topics, and then he kind of debunks it at the end how it could because there's one tiktok guy that supposedly found giants at the top of this mountain in washington (laughs) and apparently he died very mysteriously suddenly after like supposedly being um followed by the government and stuff like this um yeah so it's really cool it's just like a nostalgia thing of like apparently this guy was a huge fan of Art Bell Coast to Coast. I used to listen to Art Bell like me and my roommate um, driving home from working at Harris at like two o'clock in the morning, listening to Art Bell. And it's like one of those you listen to a radio program. You're already home. You're sitting in a driveway, but you're still listening to the fucking program in your car, waiting for the commercial to come on so you can hurry up and run inside mm-hmm. to turn the radio on inside. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a really good. And the guy's a good, a good writer. Cause he has like his goldfish is his guy, his sidekick that talks. It's called Hecklefish. Who's like the ultimate believes in the lizard people and the fucking, we didn't really go to the moon, like the ultimate conspiracy person, like mm-hmm. somebody to play off of with this stuff. So yeah, it's a it's a good YouTube channel to check out. But um I watched two I guess true crime drama type stuff for Netflix. First one was called The Pez Outlaw. It's about this guy back in the 90s. Um He's the reason why every cereal box has one per household rule on it because he used to cheat the system he would go to these um toy shows with his kids and sees like these cereal toys Mm -hmm. people would resell them for a decent chunk of change so he's like all right so he would go to the recycling plant close by the house buy all the um cereal boxes that get brought in for recycling cut out the upcs and send it in and he would get like hundreds of toys and he would just set up a table and start selling cereal um toys and then they finally changed the rule to where it's one per household and then he found out that um this lady comes in and sells a pez one pez dispenser for fifteen hundred dollars at a table and he has to know why he goes and talks to the lady she just tells him one word and it's like some eastern european word and it turns out pez is divided between two um i guess companies there's pez international and there's pez usa Pez USA only distributes in America. They cannot distribute outside of America. Mm-hmm. That's the licensing. Pez International can go anywhere, any country, but USA. So for USA Pez collectors, the European stuff is the hard to get. That's the most expensive. That's the most desirable. So this guy would just look at the back of a Pez dispenser and it will tell you the address to the Eastern European fucking factories like their main factory. So him and his son 
basically put a mortgage on the house. They flew to Croatia, I think it was. Like when, back in the nineties, back when like they were committing ge- genocide over there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, he just went up to the Pez factory and said, like, "Hey, I want to buy some Pez from y'all." And the fucking dude opened his doors. Like he basically described it like Willy Wonka's factory. And the dude was like, just dumping all these pezzes into a fucking duffel bag and he would fill up multiple duffel bags and he would fly back home. He got, he gets stops at customs and apparently it's illegal. You can't go to another country, buy a product in bulk just to bring it back to America to sell it. Cause you don't have the right, it's trademarked and something like that. It's licensing and mm-hmm. all this all this stuff. You don't have the company never gave you the right. Pez America for some idiot reason, they had the trademark but they never signed, they never filed the paperwork trademark for customs. So legally, he can do this. So this dude was coming in with like thousands and thousands of Pez, selling them for like all this money. He was making like tons and tons of money, going back and forth, bringing in Pez's. And it basically he had, he, Pez America president, um, didn't like this. So at one point they had like a private detective following him to find out who's in the Europe division is doing this, letting him do this. And then to get back at him, all the designs that they rejected that the European people submitted, that's now going for like, there's one called the bubble, bubble boy Pez that sells for like $1,200. This dude had like five of them that he was selling. Originally, Pez USA didn't like the design, so they didn't make it. Just to fuck over this dude, we're going to make it. We're going to charge $1.99. We're going to flood the market. So now demand's not there. So every time he tried to do something, Pez had to step in to fuck him over. And then it got to the point where it's like, all right, fine. You can make your own dis- your own pezzes like Funkos. Mm-hmm. You can make your own. So this dude legitimately took his money that he made off of these pezzes and started making his own design, and people wanted them. Well, Pez USA dude is a petty motherfucker. Took his design, mass produced it, <laughs> and flooded the market for way cheap for like two bucks and to the point where it basically drove him out of business. Like he couldn't sell his own Pez, his own design Pezes. And, um, which tells me, I don't know. Like he would still, if he goes into greater detail, (laughs) yeah, because if he was perfectly legal for him to make his own dispensers and design his own dispensers, but they still own the, I guess you submit the design and it technically Pez owned the design you submit. Oh, so if you had to uh, submit to them to get it made, yeah, I'm sure there's there's a reason. Well, because here's the thing: like all those Pez dispensers he was bringing in, like they're still worth more than the American ones because if there's something on them that indicates this is a European one. An actual collector is going to go, no, I want that, not this mass-produced piece of junk. Well, the Bubble Boy Pez, or the Bubble Man Pez, I think it was called, there was only 12 in existence. And this dude had like three of them, I think it was. His son got one for free, and somebody came up to him and was like, hey, I'll give you $1,200 right now for it. And his son was like, just started college and he's like yeah here you go here's twelve hundred dollars now it's worth like a couple thousand Mm -hmm. if he would have kept it um but i'm guessing it's like pez usa just flooded the market making thousands and thousands of this this one character because it became popular yeah but i mean like a true diehard where they would still look for yeah you you got those there's one dude in europe who's like a diehard collector he's got this house in the woods a barn or something like that he won't let 
the camera guy's close to it, he would have to go inside and grab it and he'll come out and it's like, Hey, look at this Pez. And he was so pissed. It's like, you shouldn't be making a documentary about this guy. You should be making a documentary about me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it's a, it's a good documentary. Um, it's, it's intriguing. Um, whole aspect of fucking Pez and the, the Pez collectors. This dude literally went into a 10 year depression and couldn't look at a Pez didn't go to the like he used to go to all the fucking conventions he was he was the man oh yeah i mean if if the, the company itself is fucking with it you're like fuck it they basically bankrupt him like he he almost lost his house and his farm like his wife's a a white uh horse an equestrian some trainer and uh, a rehabilitator or something like that and um she ended up fortunately got um started getting ms or something like that or one of the diseases, Parkinson, Parkinson, I think it was. So he had to stay home and mm-hmm. focus on her, and that's why he started the 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 his own pezes to like work at home, be closer to her, and make money legally. So you don't have to deal with the legal mm-hmm. aspects of it. And then Pez USA came in and like say, nope. Basically, he lost everything. Um. Got, barely got to keep the house and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I think if that happened today, <coughs> like it wouldn't go down like that. <clears throat> yeah, this is all mid to late 90s. Yeah, I don't think that stuff. would go down like that now. Um, yeah, I mean, just on the collective front, like the original Star Wars figures, right? They're all marked for the original lineup yeah. when it came out. Power of the Force was all those figures just remade. Same molds and everything, but clearly marked. Well, Power of the Force is Hasbro. Was it Hasbro at the time? Yeah, because the the originals were Kenner. Kenner. (laughs) It's one of the, whoever the toy company, or Lucas, George Lucas, they re-released the toys just to test the market, just to see, because they thought about making the movies, the prequels. So they released well, the toys it, again, as a test. But again, it's one of those like those original figures are worth more, even though it's the exact same mold. Yeah, because people want the originals; they don't want the remakes or yeah. the reproductions. Even though they're official reproductions, they don't want the reproductions. Um. So yeah, this guy for like ten years never did nothing, and then he just started making a blog telling his stories, and he called it the Pez Outlaw. And then he became famous on that. So now he's finally past the point of like um, being depressed about it. And he finally got over it to a point where he can go back and like talk to his good friends that was in mm-hmm. the Pez community, going to these conventions. Um, people come to like he's a celebrity now. Like he wrote a book. There's a book about him and he goes to signings and stuff like that and people line up and to meet the Pez outlaw and so now he's got fame off of that um and then the other thing i watched was the mumbai mafia police versus the um the underworld uh back in the late 90s once again in mumbai there's this gang or uh, this mafia group called the D company and at one, at the highest point they had tw- about 25,000 people under their payroll and crime was so bad in Mumbai like extortion rape prostitution fucking sex trafficking drugs kidnapping like you name it they were doing it one of the reporters at the time was doing an interview now about it and it's like they didn't have a finger and finger in each pie they own the whole pie shop and so it got to the point where the government was like something has to be done about this so they um the police started a squad to personally take down these people and they would shoot and kill these um gangsters and they started to become celebrities, like this squad group, to the mm-hmm. point where they were making movies based on them. And they were more popular than the movie stars, like the Bollywood people and stuff <laughs> like that. 
and they called them encounters. Every time they killed somebody, it, it's an encounter. And the top person, the top police man has over 100 counters. This person, it's like a fucking tally. It's like, all right, this week we'll look at the chart and like, oh, this person is now at 75 encounters while this other person's hot on his heels with um, with 68 or something like that. And it got to the point where the top guy was over 100, another guy was in the 80s, another guy was in the 90s. All these encounters over these years. And the fucking crime went down dramatically because the cops were just straight up shoot first, questions later uh, type of deal. And the public loved them. People were running for their life, like the, the the major crime bosses. People, if they wasn't killed, they were in hiding. Like the leader guy is in Dubai still to this day. Like is still in hiding. <laughs> they can't find him. Um, and then the Times um article came out. A dude was in Mumbai. He was a writer for the Times. I think he's British. And he was like, this doesn't make any sense. These gangsters have like AK-47s, Uzis, semi-automatic pistols, and all this other stuff. These cops have fucking revolvers, six shooters. That's all they have going into these encounters. And they're coming out untouched. Like something's up with that. So he sits down and interviews the main guy and he's basically saying straight up like, yeah, we murder these people because they're bad. And now the human rights people start to get into it. It's like, why are you shooting these people? Why are you not trying to arrest them so they can have their day in court? Who are you to judge these people? Maybe they could have been rehabilitated and have reformed after they get out of prison or something like that. So apparently <clears throat> they like, start getting, there's a billion people in this country. <laughs> <laughs> so they start arresting the cops because now allegations are coming out. It's like, yeah, they kidnapped this one dude. They're going to take him in for questioning. And next thing you know, he shot dead in a shootout like 20 miles away. How did that happen? You just you just came into his home and arrested him and take was supposed to take him to his station. He got out of his handcuffs and now he's got a shootout and coming out. Like the stories didn't add up. And apparently they were kidnapping people, torturing them, and if they wouldn't give up any information, they would kill him and count it as an encounter. They were defending themselves. And then public started to turn on them. And then so, magically, the lead guy was up for trial for kidnapping and murder. The key witness magically disappears. Two days later, he's found decomposing in the fucking, in the ground. He gets acquitted. He gets transferred to like some lower department area. Mm -hmm. He makes this magical bust. (laughs) They, they can't ignore. This is this goodwill fucking getting good graces. He arrests the brother of the leader, who's like in charge of the uh, ex uh, the fucking import export. I think it was. He just goes into the guy, arrests him, and takes him to jail. No shootout, no nothing. And this is supposedly like a big setup, like to make him look good, trying to get him back in the good graces of the public. And so, um, so yeah, it was a, it was an interesting documentary about that. And then it turns out in 2020, that same cop is back on trial. I mean, right now, 2022, he's back on trial for supposedly killing a business owner. So yeah, I mean, it's, it the uh, what would how did call how was the LAPD described in colors? <clears throat> the biggest gang there is, yeah, is the LAPD. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a, uh, it was, it was kind of cool to watch. It was just like, at one point, the public loved them. They were the most popular things in India, 
and then that fucking one article came out, <laughs> and now they're public and yeah, because they one. don't care as long as they don't. They look. We don't want to know the details. Because hey. then once you learn the details, you you start feeling you start feeling icky. Yeah, <clears throat> that's what that is. They still loved what they did. They're like, yeah, they killed all these criminals. Oh wait, uh, I'm not supposed to, like. Uh, uh. It's basically Drudge Dread. Yeah, that's what they were doing. Like, I don't want to know how the sausage is made, just what it's made of. <laughs> like, the is sausage it, is, is full good? of dead... Is it good sausage? Is it good sausage filled with dead criminals? I just don't... I don't care how you make it. Um, yeah, that's about it. Then we'll talk about the one main thing we've both been watching. Last what? of Us. I haven't watched Last of Us. You haven't watched Last of Us? I just know that I know the the, the the Nick Offerman. Yeah, I just know the story for that. Oh, you don't have HBO Max, do you? Yeah, I do. You do? Mm-hmm. Why are you not watching it? I don't like The Last of Us. I didn't like the okay, game. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you like this: I don't like the game either, but this show is so fucking good. Mainly because of they. This will probably go down as one of the best video game adaptations yeah because i mean to me just, just knowing what that third episode was like and what it's like in the game like characters like in the game it just seems like they're expanding on they taking some stuff. liberties like they're changing some stuff from the game mm-hmm. very it's not much like you watch that first episode it's literally you spend more time with his daughter leading into the mm-hmm. um the outbreak that night but literally driving through town like you and Tommy with his daughter in the back of the truck going through the town when everybody's panicking in Austin. Um, then getting separated, her getting shot by the soldier guy, stuff like that. It's literally... Their attention to detail in this show is so good. Um, but again, like we said, that's what happens when you actually have... You give a shit. Yeah, you give a shit. You don't, you're not you just licensing, some... licensing, licensing off yeah, you're not... the, the name. Because Neil Druckmann is the executive producer. He's the writer. He's the director. Like, he's hands-on. Like, if you took somebody from 343 or somebody from Bungie, like one of the top oh, guys yeah, from if Bungie... If they went to Bungie to freaking make a Halo show... Yeah. Um, Halo would have been fucking amazing. Yeah. But I'm like you. I hate the fucking games. Yeah, I just... I, it's always bugged me that everyone praises that game. And I'm like, am I the only one that remembers the initial reviews? Like, shitting on the AI and, like, Ellie just keeps running out in front of shit. And it's repetitive. Yeah. It's over and over. Fucking sneak. Stab. Oh, shit. I fucked up. Fire... Uh, firefight. But... This show gets better. It's one of those shows that gets better and better with each episode. Them basically saying how the outbreak happened makes sense. Um, the casting is perfect. Pablo Pascal as Joel is perfect. Um, Game of Thrones kid. Bella Ramsey. Bella Ramsey is perfect as Ellie. Like, she does an amazing job as Ellie. Like, capturing that character. Um, uh, Tess was great. Like, her her story. I do say they're fucking flying. Well, that's another thing that this. I was like, how, is it going to end? Season, the first season going to play out the whole first game? So then you're kind of screwed with, like, often Pedro Pascal in, like, episode two of season two? Um, so supposedly, yes, that's, that's basically season two is going to be the second game. And, um, I was talking to Justin last night and he, he sworn he could have, he read somewhere that supposedly they're only making two seasons of this. I mean, well, that was, if you just go by the games and you do the first game in the first, the first one, yeah, then it makes sense. But supposedly there's a massive time skip between the first game and the second game. So you could, well, you need to. Well, I mean, in I'm the saying, game itself, it there was a massive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So between the first game and the second game, there's a massive time skip. So you could yeah. always fill that in. Um, but then that co- then that really shows how good your writers are. If Neil Druckmann actually, 
yeah. is as good a writer as people uh, give him credit for. Oh, that fucking second. That second game. That second is game's horrible. That's what I'm so saying. So bad. Um, <clears throat> and do we really want to see like little Bella Ramsey get her fingers cut off and shit? You know, we want to yeah. see Pedro Pascal get his head beat in with a golf club. Like, that's some Game of Thrones shit right there. Pedro Pascal, second episode, fucking gets his head caved in with the fucking golf club. That's what I told Justin. No, Justin has nothing, has no idea about the games. And I told him, I was like, listen, avoid any talk about the second game. Because, yeah, if there's only going to be two seasons and it's of game one and game two. If you don't know nothing about <laughs> the video games, do not seek it out. Yeah. To know... Um, but another great thing is, like, even the voice actors are popping up. Like, the chick who was the voice actress for the Firefly leader. Mm-hmm. Um, she plays the actress in the show. She plays the same character. Um, That's what DC wants to do. They wanna, they're casting voice actors for their animated stuff that can play the characters in live action. Yeah. The um, Tommy, uh, Joel's brother, mm -hmm. the voice actor, just showed up on this past episode four. And um, but episode three, the Bill and Frank episode, where it's just strictly them. Pablo Pascal is belly in it. Ellie's belly in it. Yeah, because in the game, when you get there, it's like after all of this in the game. When you get to that, you get to that character. Yeah, because you Cause find you find Bill, and then Frank's dead in the house. So Bill tells you, "Yeah, Frank left. He's a fucking asshole. He abandoned me. He's gone. He didn't. He doesn't know Frank went off to kill himself. Yeah. And when you find Frank's body in the house, and you find the the suicide note. And he's basically saying, yeah, Bill's a fucking asshole. I couldn't live with him anymore. He's just stuck in his ways. I can't live this life anymore. Living with him. And he killed himself because of it. And um, and that's stuff they don't talk about in the show. They kind of change that. What they do in the show is... Frank... I mean, Bill is like the ultimate fucking doomsday prepper dude who's a fucking genius. He's a MacGyver. Mm -hmm. he, he goes to the local hardware store. He makes an electric fence, blowtorch fucking traps, shotgun tied to a string. Somebody read the uh, Max... Uh, zombie Survival my, Guide. Max's Zombie Survival Guide. Basically. And he basically cordons off this whole fucking... His, his town. Mm -hmm. And then one day on the... He's eating... Like, he's a perfect fucking chef. Like, he can cook amazing. He knows wine. He's fucking Ron Swanson. <laughs> yeah, basically. He knows everything. One day, he finds Frank in a hole. He gets him out. And he's like, you going to, You want to go to Boston? Boston's that way. And he's like, I need something to eat. I'm fucking starving. It's like, why should I bring you inside? Because you're going to, I'm going to feed you. And then you're going to tell every, all your friends and come back here and steal my food and all my supplies. And he's like, listen... You know, I'm not a good liar because when he comes up to him in a hole, he's like, do you have a weapon? And he's like, kind of hesitates for a second. He's like, uh, uh, no. And then, so he takes him in. He, he feeds him, gives him wine. And, um, lets him take a shower. And like he does, he plays the piano. And you can tell Bill is like, very on edge because he's not used to being around somebody mm -hmm. and it's also like oh no you're touching my stuff don't touch my stuff because you're playing my mom's piano and stuff like that and you're playing linda rodstadt on the piano and they have a kiss and next thing you know they're lovers fast forward they're They've been living together for a little bit and they have that speech of like, we can't live like this anymore. We can't live shuttered in. The government 
I'm sick and tired of the government as Nazis. And Nick Wolfman's like, the government are Nazis. And he's like, well, yeah, now they are, but they wasn't then. And he's just like, we need to make friends. I need to paint like houses. I need to give this place color. I need to cut the grass. At least give it a personality. Give it something. And so that's how they meet Joel and Tess. And um, it's it's a great episode. It's like an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 15 minutes. And it's mainly just Nick Offerman and the guy from Succession, I think it is. No, White Lotus. Mm-hmm. He's in. He's from like. He's like some fan favorite character from White Lotus, and um, it's an amazing episode of just them two. Um, and then at the end, he is. It gets back to like now we're fast forward back to like where episode one, I mean uh, episode two was like where. Joel finally, Joel and Tess finally leave to go on that mission to bring Ellie to the Firefly Resistance, and um, you see that Frank now is in a wheelchair. He can barely control his muscle movements and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. It looks like he's getting Parkinson, uh, uh, MS or something like that. And F- Bill is taking care of him. And then in one night, it just comes like Frank just straight up tells him like, "Listen." I want tomorrow to be my last day. I don't want you to fight about this. I made up my mind. I can't go on like this. I can't be a burden to you like this anymore. So tomorrow, I want you, me and you is going to have the best day of our lives. We're going to get married. And then I want you to grind up all my Vicodin and medicine that Joel and them smuggle in for me. And I'm going to take it in a cocktail and I'm going to go to sleep and not wake up. And I want you to be okay with that because I'm okay with that. And then, so there's a little montage of showing them like doing their stuff, getting married, him painting, just having that good last day. And then Nick Offerman's like, listen, I thought about it. I can't go on without you. If you're going to end it, then I'm ending it too. At least I want to, I lived my life happy and I can't go on without you. And you changed my life. You made me a better person. So Frank agrees to, they both going to take the special cocktail. They're going to have a perfect dinner, have the cocktail. We're just going to go to bed, go to sleep and that'll be it. And at the end of the episode, that's when Joel and them pull up. And um, it's such a great episode. And um, it's definitely a series worth watching. Like, it's Game of Game of House of Dragons style love. Like, I can't wait until the fucking next episode. <coughs> it, it just gets, it just builds and builds and builds. It gets <clears throat> better and better and better. Mm-hmm. And because of the Super Bowl this Sunday... This week's episode is now tomorrow night because they don't want to keep compete with the uh, Super Bowl. So episode five is going to be tomorrow night. Um, and it's also, if you look at the numbers that HBO is putting out. Yeah, it's supposedly going up every week. Yeah. Episode four jumped 17% from episode three. Unfortunately, you got fucking assholes out there who review bomb episode three because my character can't be fucking gay. But they were gay in the... Exactly. The game. It's it's stupid people who... who Don't know anything about... Either they play the game, but they just didn't pick up on that that fucking... Mm -hmm. Ellie in the backseat. It's like, hey, I stole this from Bill, and it's a playgirl. Yeah. Why are the pages sticky? Like, literally... That's another thing in the in the show. They do those scenes like word for word because yeah, because he when in the game he fucking when they're in the house and Frank's hanging there. Bill's like, you know, uh, no, Joel asked him, "Did you know?" And he's like, "Yeah, he was my partner." Yeah. 
So I don't know how, like, yeah, like all the shit that people are complaining about. I'm like, then you didn't play the game. The thing is, like, they didn't do the. It wasn't like a whole town that, in only certain sections, mm-hmm. were booby trapped, and Bill only only had like a few buildings that he kind of stayed around, in the Russell booby. No, he had like, a, a like a little town, like a, a group of houses, and um. So you didn't have to go to like go to the school to get the battery from mm-hmm. the fucking bus to bring back to get and then that's how all the infected basically swarm the town and bill has to leave the town yeah with you um that doesn't happen joel just shows up basically bill leaves him a note saying that how um his basement he made his own food his own bullets his his whole wall is filled with fucking guns (laughs) Like, he was the ultimate doomsday prepper guy. Like, the beginning of the episode is, um, when you first introduced to him, it's the government rounding up all the people in the town, and he's in the basement with a gas mask on, holding his gun in his little secret bunker under the house, just watching, waiting for one of those motherfuckers to find his secret stairs. And, um, and when he say, all clear, he uh, goes up, once they leave, he goes outside, takes the gas mask off, looks around, and then there's like a montage of him going to like the different stores, grabbing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that episode, I'll probably, I might watch well, again. Like I said, I'm not a fan I'm of t- it, but that 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 episode sounds <laughs> fucking awesome. <clears throat> you have to watch the other episodes that really set up this episode. Um. Another great thing about the about the show, it's 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 flashbacks. The first episode, they show a clip. The first thing you see is a clip from that's supposedly like in the nineteen sixties or nineteen seventies, where it's Jonathan from the Mummy, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and this other dude, this other scientist on like a Dick Cavett, Cavett, I think yeah. it was his name type show. And it's just two scientists, and they were talking about like the fall of humanity, what's what could cause us to be wiped out. And they talk about like nuclear war and blah blah blah. And he's like, and Jonathan from the Mummy's character was like, no, it's the fungus, like mold. And he talks about the the. Oh, I forgot. I, I don't know what it's called. The the fungus that gets on an ant and makes the zombie yeah. ants and stuff <clears> like that. Something Sith or something. Yeah, and people start laughing. And it's kind of joking around, like people. Are, and then he just keeps going in more and more detail, and it starts getting more and more creepy. Like this could happen. It's like all you need is a slight change in the temperature. Sure, these fungus can't survive in humans because of our body temperature, but who says climate change doesn't mutate? their DNA to mm-hmm. where they can survive in us and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, cause the host is like smoking his cigarette. Cause it's like the old fucking days. Oh, yeah, where yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Got the ashtray and the fucking little single malt scotch thing next to him. And he's, and he's kind of joking around at first when he's talking. And then next thing you know, he's like the audience members are not laughing anymore. They're like, yeah, keep going creeping out and stuff like that. And, now the host ain't really joking. And so um, it's real good that they piece together a backstory on how this outbreak happened. Um, and you get those little bits and pieces on each episode, the first and second episodes. You kind of get these little flashbacks before the outbreak to explain everything and it's so good um how the outbreak started how it got affected so many people so quickly and how humanity fell so quick um afterwards once the outbreak initially happened um yeah it's the attention to detail between the game and like, especially if you know the game and you're watching a show, there's so many little 
callbacks and Easter eggs that um, that they brought from the game to the show. Ellie with the joke book, which is like a not that big of a deal in the game. It's just something that randomly happens at times throughout the game um, at specific moments. But they brought that into the into the show of her reading these funny dad pun jokes, and um, yeah. And on top of that, it's just like I said, the acting is great. It's perfect casting, and um, it's definitely something you should watch. That the um. um even the special effects are really good, like the actual clickers and stuff like that. Right, I mean, they're dumping look, look good. a ton of money yeah. into the show. And I'm telling you, this is <clears throat> this is literally going to be like like how the House of Dragons is. Like, everybody loves this show, and it's going to be like one of those shows that might get a ton of nominations for uh, awards. Yeah, I could see it racking up Emmys. Like, Pablo Pascal is fucking great in it. Of just Joel, who just, once his daughter died, he's fucking done with the world, and he doesn't feel emotion anymore. And, like, when you first meet up with them in present day in Boston, this kid slowly walks to the Boston um, QZ zone. Is it QZ or ZQ? The Boston zone. Kid gets picked up. He gets brought to the hospital. They check him out. These two security guards are like talking to him, asking where he's from. They hit him with the uh, injection in the in the neck to see if he's infected. Turns red, and the security guards are just asking him, like trying to make him feel comfortable because they're about to fucking euthanize him. Mm-hmm. And Tess and Joel, their job at that day was to disposal of the bodies well the kid's body is now in the back of that truck and they have to throw in the fire and Tess was like I can't do that I can't I can't kill I can't throw a kid on a fucking fire and blah 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 Joel was like alright fucking grabs the, the kid no problem throws him on the fire cause he's so detached from the world he's fucking a shell of himself mm-hmm after his daughter died and what happened in the outbreak and the shit he's done, him and Tess has done to survive in this world. And slowly each episode, now when he's with Ellie, but just them two, now you can see, especially in episode four, he's starting to break down those walls. Like he's starting to let, because at first he's like, you're just cargo. You're not family. I don't know you. You're, I'm just making a delivery. And then now, the more time they spend together, the more, like, he's starting to see Ellie as his own daughter and stuff like that. It's, you should definitely watch the show from the beginning and just watch through. I'll try. No, uh, dude, uh, (laughs) completely, because I'm exactly like you. I hate the fucking games. The games are awful but this show is so fucking good well, i mean that's what it's, it sounds like they expand on like all the shit that people made up to make the game story sound so great it's like it seems like they've actually each episode has a flash done this each episode has a flashback the first episode had one the second episode one that kind of explains the outbreak first episode was like the concept of the outbreak how it could happen the second episode actually tells you <clears throat> how the outbreak happened <sighs> and why it happened so quickly and then the third episode you have the the flashback is basically Frank and Bill Mm -hmm. that whole episode is a flashback and then the fourth episode Ellie basically asks is like what happened like why did it fall so quickly and Joel basically said like the running the main theory that everybody thinks is that it fungus and mold is in yeast and got into the bread and the flour Jakarta in Indonesia Thailand Indonesia one of those countries 
is like the leading producer of flour. So basically, bread, wheat, like, I mean, bread, um, pancakes, like anything like that, that has to deal with flour comes from that fucking, yeah. from those major plants. And that's where the infection first started. So if you ate bread or pancakes, waffles, anything like that, biscuits, yeah, anything you would throw flour in, fucking... You're instantly... Sauces. <laughs> yeah. And that's the first episode. Like, Joel doesn't eat pancake because they're about to cook pancakes, but we don't have any pancake mix. So we're not going to make pancakes that morning. So we made something else. The neighbors made biscuits. Hey, you want some biscuits? Joel was like, oh, no, I'm doing this Atkins diet. So that's how he survives. He's doing Atkins. There's no bread. Yeah. And um, his daughter doesn't get infected. She goes to the house after school and she made cookies. And she's about to eat some. And then she tells us like, oh, it's got raisins in it. And she's like, oh, never mind. I don't eat raisins. But as you're watching, that morning, they felt they was feeding grandma biscuits. <laughs> And then throughout the episode, that first episode, um, when she's at the house, you can see grandma in the background in the wheelchair just starting to like you literally see her fucking die and then get resurrected back in the reflection of the TV while um, Joel's daughter is looking at the um, their VCR movie collection or DVD collection on that thing. So the reason why Joel never got infected was because he was on Atkins diet. <laughs> and um so yeah, it's so good. It's it's a hundred it's a thousand times better than the game, storytelling wise. Um definitely check it out. I'm surprised they didn't go with like he had like celiac or something. What's that? <clears throat> Gluten uh intolerant. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so yeah I guess that, that's it I, I, I'll give it I'll try giving it a try I mean I can probably start watching them at lunch like Lily and when they do the Jakarta flashback when they actually explain patient zero and all that stuff they go to the military finds like the top professor on on that field mm. and take her and show her the dead body it's like she's like alright where's patient zero did y'all contain it it's like no this person went crazy at the flower plant, started attacking people. They locked him in the bathroom. We had to kill him. It's like, okay, did you kill anybody else that was infected that got fit? It's like, no. How many people are missing from that factory? And he's like, 14. And you can see she's drinking tea. And as soon as she says, he says 14, her hand starts fucking shaking to the point where she had to, like, she's spilling it. And had to put it down, and she, like, puts her hands up to her glasses and stuff like that, and kind of, she's like, and the guy asks, like, what can we do to stop this, to get this under control? And she's like, you bomb this city. You bomb the shit out of the city until there's nothing left, and then you bomb it again. Oh, yeah. You make sure. You, you raccoon city, that motherfucker. Uh-huh. You make sure everybody's dead. That is the only way you you survive, you control this. And the dude's like horrified. And she's like, if you don't mind, cause she knows it's done. We're mm-hmm. over. She's like, if you don't mind, I would like to go spend my time with my family. Cause she knows that's yeah. not going to happen. And that they're dead. Like there's nothing they can do. This outbreak, uh, how she, cause they explain how quickly they turn and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And like all the, the body she autopsy had the bite mark on a leg and stuff like that and how quickly it turned like five minutes because they there's a poster that shows you certain areas of the body if you get bit how much how long it takes to to get infected and turn and um and so like she doesn't believe it at first and then she does the autopsy on the body and then she freaks out because you can see the fungus inside the body it's starting to sprout yeah starting to sprout out and stuff like that and kind of like like kind of go at her especially in the mouth part because that's where 
it infects people like through the mouth. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's when they sit down and talk to her and she says, just bomb the city, just murder everybody until there's nothing left. Just wipe it from the fucking face of the earth. Raccoon city, that motherfucker. It's so, it's the writing on the show is so good and stuff like that. It's, um, definitely go see it. Yeah. So, all right. I think we'll end it there. We're, uh, we've got a pretty long, good show, uh, this week. And, uh, we will see you next time. As always, I'm Wayne. That was Paul. And we're out. <laughs>